Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Indai RN, your nurse in charge. And on this video, we are going to talk about the acid-base balances. And before we're going to start, please don't forget to click like, comment, and subscribe on my channel, especially if you are new. Talking about acid-base balances, you should know the level of acidity and the level of alkalinity. Always note that the neutral is in 7. So the pH scale is in 7. And it is important to note the normal values for the pH, the pCO2, and the bicarbonate or the HCO3. For the pH level, the normal is in 7.35 to 7.45, CO2 level is in 35 to 45, and HCO3 level is in 22 to 26. So for respiratory acidosis, it is always an equal, therefore the pH is low and PaCO2 is high, while the carbonate is normal. For the respiratory alkalosis, it is the different way around of the acidosis. And for the metabolic acidosis, always note that if we talk about metabolic, pH and bicarbonate are always in the same direction while the PaCO2 is normal. Therefore, if we speak about acid-base balances, the Rome is always there. Respiratory, the direction will always be opposite, while the metabolic, the direction is always equal. So when pH is high, PCO2 is down, that is alkalosis, and it is in the respiratory. pH is low, PCO2 is up, and that is acidosis. Remember that if we say respiratory, we are speaking about the lung, and while we speak about metabolic, it is always the kidneys okay to get back in the room m stands for metabolic and e stands for equal and this is it so if the ph and hco3 are high that is alkalosis while if the ph is low and hco3 also is low that is acidosis so always remember your room respiratory the direction of the arrows will always be opposite and for the metabolic the direction of the arrows will be equal Example number one, we have pH 7.3, that is acidosis, and HCO3 is 20, that is metabolic. Always remember your normal levels. So, if this is the thing, this is an example of metabolic acidosis. Okay, next one, or next example is, if pH is 7.58, that is alkalotic because it is high, and if the HCO3 is 32, that is metabolic, therefore, this is an example of metabolic alkalosis because their results are high in this way. While in the third one, if you only have this data in the question, for example, pH is 7.22, this means it's acidosis, while the HCO3 is 35, you don't have any data for the respiratory consider it that this is already respiratory because we always say that if the pH is low, HCO3 should also be low so that they will be in the metabolic. However, if you don't have any variables for respiratory in the question or any PCO2 in the question, conclude that the answer will be in the respiratory side because they are in the opposite direction. In that case, the CO2 is acidosis. Therefore, the result is respiratory acidosis. Take note that not all questions in the NCLEX or any nursing examinations will always have a complete data. So if we say acid-based balances, this is already a tricky one because the boards will going to test your knowledge. They are not going to give all the information about the thing that being happened in the patient. So you need to use critical thinking. And in acid-based balances, we are not memorizing here. We only memorize maybe the, the normal limits, but for those things that being happened to the patient, we need to apply principles. Those are the things that we need to discuss on this video. So let's discuss principle number one. As the pH goes, so goes my patient except for potassium. So what do we mean here? If the pH is low, everything is already low except for potassium. And if the pH is high, everything is high except for potassium. So the potassium will always go the other way around. So if your pH is low, so expect that the signs and symptoms of the patient is already getting low. For an example, patient may go to comatose. While if the pH is high, everything is high. So the patient may be experiencing irritability. 
So if the pH goes 7.45, this is already a result of alkalosis and the signs and symptoms that you can see to the patient are all high, like tachycardia, tachypnea, and hypertension. That is the vital sign of your patient. Since we are speaking about alkalosis, patient may suffer from seizures, irritability, and dyspastic muscle. Also in the GI area, berberigmi will happen or there is an increased bowel sound. Remember, everything here in the alkalosis is high. Okay, so imagine that your patient is having irritability, seizures, vital signs are high, and there could be a help of the sympathetic nervous system. Meanwhile, there is also a hyperflexia that is grade 3 and 4. However, in the alkalosis, though the pH is high, the potassium will go to the opposite direction. So remember that here in the alkalosis, the potassium level is low and that is hypokalemia. So if you are caring for alkalotic patient or their pH is high, your nursing intervention will be suctioning because of the presence of seizure. Also, note for patient safety. Remember that their sympathetic nervous system is active. Therefore, keep your suctioning at bedside or your airway kit at bedside and do your nursing interventions according to the needs of the patient, okay? So to proceed, let's also discuss acidosis. If pH goes below 7.35, this is acidosis. And the signs and symptoms could be constipation and absence of bowel sound. If the patient in the alkalosis will suffer from borborygmi, here in the acidosis, the patient will suffer from paralytic ileus. And these are the signs and symptoms in the GI. Patient will also suffer flaccidity, obtended lethargy, and worse, coma. Note that the patient will suffer here hyporeflexia that is grade 0 to 1. If the vital sign of the patient in alkalosis are all high, consider here in acidosis that their vital signs are all in the low level. So the patient may suffer bradypnea, low BP or hypotension, and bradycardia. So the signs and symptoms here in the acidosis are all other way around from the alkalosis. So they are just in the opposite direction also. However, if the pH is low, remember that the potassium will get high. So the patient may be hyperkalemia. So what are you going to do? Note also for your heart rhythm. Do ECG, okay? If your patient is suffering from acidosis, your nursing intervention could be always note for your patient's respiratory condition. Check the airway and do ventilation with ambu bagging as soon as possible because of the risk for coma. And of course, if the patient is at risk for coma, they could be at risk for respiratory arrest. So what is the thing that you have at bedside? Ambu bagging, oxygen, mechanical ventilators, and others. So if you can see, if we speak about alkalosis or acidosis, we are not speaking about memorization here. What we see here is that the patient's condition, we just need to analyze that here in the acidosis, everything goes down. So your patient might be in coma. Meanwhile, here in the alkalosis, your patient may cease. So the thing that you need to do is to prepare yourself for the needed interventions to be done. And that is according to the needs of the patient. And take note that here in the signs and symptoms of alkalosis and in signs and symptoms of acidosis, they will play in the select all that apply. So you should know your first principle, that is, as the pH goes, so goes my patient except for potassium. So if the pH is low, every system in the body is shutting down. Meanwhile, if the pH is high, every system in the body is irritable. So the patient can suffer hyperexcitability. Let's speak about the borborygmi versus the paralytic ileus. Here in the borborygmi, the stomach is always noisy, okay? There is an increased bowel sound to the patient because everything here is high. Meanwhile, here in the paralytic ileus, the GI is shutting down. Clear? And always remember that if your patient is acidotic, so apply your critical and emergency nursing skills. Principle number two, always remember MAC Kuzmal. In the 4 ABG analysis, respiratory acidosis, respiratory alkalosis, metabolic acidosis, metabolic alkalosis, we can only see Kuzmal's in metabolic acidosis. Kuzmal's is the breathing condition of your patient already. So in order for you to remember Kuzmal's, always remember MAC Kuzmal's. And that is metabolic acidosis with Kuzmal's respiration. Okay? MAC Kuzmal's. And let's credit this Mac Kuzmal with Mark Klimek. 
What if you are seated there in the examinations and you don't know about your acid-based balances? So here are the things that you need to do when you are already trapped in the examinations with regard to the acid-based balances. The next principle is always know your respiratory. How? If you are trapped in the examination already, check the question and ask yourself, is it lung? Are the conditions being given in the question is referring to the lung? If yes, then consider it to be a respiratory. Now, if you already concluded that it is in respiratory, check if the patient in that question is saying overventilating or underventilating. If we say overventilating, the patient may be suffering from using of accessory muscles, Panting also. The patient may also be panting while they are breathing. Meanwhile, if we say underventilating, the patient may look pale and there is the problem with gas exchange in the body. So if the patient is underventilating, pick acidosis. Okay? Pick acidosis. However, if you can see or conclude that the patient is overventilating, then pick alkalosis. pH is already under if the patient is underventilating. So patient's acid-based balance will be respiratory acidosis so let's repeat check first the question then ask yourself is it lung then if it's lung consider it to be respiratory is the patient in the question overventilating or underventilating check the signs and symptoms and if the patient is underventilating pick acidosis if we say ventilating we are not speaking about respiratory rate here we are actually talking about the gas exchange of the patient inside the lungs so our main determination here is the saturation of the patient so note always for the respiratory rate that it is not equal to the ventilation okay so this is a tricky play in the examination we are not speaking about respiratory rate here but we are speaking about the oxygen saturation of of the patient pay attention to the oxygen saturation okay they might trick you if we speak about asthma patient will be under ventilating why is it lung yes it is lung right is the patient under ventilating yes because in asthma there is constriction of airway so the patient may suffer from respiratory acidosis meanwhile here in the pca pumps patient may suffer from respiratory depression because of the side effects of the medications Note that here in principle 3, overventilate, underventilate, then translate. Overventilate, that is respiratory alkalosis. Underventilate, that is respiratory acidosis. So, overventilate, underventilate, translate. For example, you have a patient who suffered from near drowning. What could be the acid-base balance? Apply your principle. Is it long? Yes, it is long. Is the patient overventilating or underventilating? Remember, your patient is near drown, so the patient might be underventilating. So, patient is having respiratory acidosis. Okay? Now, another one. You are caring for a patient who has a diagnosis of emphysema. What could be the acid-base balance? Apply this principle again. Is it lung? Yes, it is lung. Then consider it to be respiratory. Are they overventilating or underventilating? Emphysema, remember, there is constriction. So, patient is underventilating. So, consider the patient to be respiratory acidosis. Okay? Next principle is the metabolic. If it's not lung, then consider it to be the other way around. That's metabolic. If the patient has prolonged gastric vomiting or suction, pick alkalosis. Why? If there is prolonged gastric vomiting, that means that you are removing the acid inside the patient's body or inside the patient's GI tract. And also, if you are doing suctioning, you are removing the acid so consider it to be alkalosis okay so principle number four if it's not long then it's metabolic Principle number five here in the metabolic is for everything else that it is not lung and it is not vomiting or suctioning, consider it to be metabolic acidosis. Here in principle number two, if it's not lung and there is a prolonged vomiting or suctioning, that is metabolic alkalosis. But if it's not lung and there is no vomiting or suctioning, that is metabolic acidosis. And the last principle is that when you don't know what to pick, all Please pick metabolic acidosis. So let's translate ABG analysis. Infantile diarrhea, is it lung? No. Is it vomiting? 
or suctioning? No, then it is metabolic acidosis. Third degree burns over 60% of the body first phase. Is it lung? No. Is it vomiting or suctioning? No, then it is metabolic acidosis. Idiopathic bolus pemphigus. Do you know this? I don't know either. So let's consider it metabolic acidosis. Next one is patient had GI surgery with NGT with low intermittent suction. Is it lung? No. Is it vomiting or suctioning? Yes. So it is metabolic alkalosis. Hyperemesis gravidarum. Is it lung? No. Is it vomiting or suctioning? Yes, it is vomiting. So let's consider it to be metabolic. Don't forget your principle number six. When you don't know what to pick, always pick metabolic acidosis. So since I'm not familiar with idiopathic bolus pemphigus, I'll consider it to be metabolic acidosis. Trust me on this one. So I guess that's all for this video. Thank you so much guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this acid-base balances and always remember your principles. Okay, and hopefully you can carry those principles during your nursing examinations. If you need some help in nursing examinations, you can check the other videos that I have on this channel. And of course, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and hit that notification bell. If you guys need some help again in nursing topics or if you have some difficulties in nursing, you can comment your problem down below and maybe I can help you. So thank you so much guys for watching. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and share this video to your friends. See you on my next video. Bye! Mm -hmm.